Hi, in this video, we will be talking about some of the functionalities of Tonyak today. Uh, we'll be going through the Tonyak user interface and how one can use it to manage their Spire deployment. Uh, this is based on the Kubernetes quick start deployment. So if you're interested in setting up your own environment, uh, please take a look at our previous video on how to set this up. So let's go ahead. So what we have here is the Tonyak main page. You can see that uh, there are multiple functionality pages uh, from the top. Um, but the main things we'll be going through today is first, uh, how do you get a global visibility with your workloads? Uh, how do I add metadata to augment my workloads as well as to be able to manage them? And lastly, we'll be going into a dashboard where you can see how I can uh, digest and synthesize the information within my workloads and agents. So let's get started. The first thing we can take a look at in the Tonyak UI would be the Tonyak server information. This tells us a little bit more about our Spire deployment. Um, so you can see the trust domain, the different plugins that are being used, and you can also look at the verbose config. So this gives us a good idea on um, what the Spire server deployment is. And then let's look at some basic functionalities, right? So if you're someone that's already familiar with Spire, uh, you can see there's agents, there's entries. These are concepts that you will be familiar with. And the nice thing about these is they're all laid out in front of you. You can search for them and so on. But really, um, one of the things that we want to showcase here is the ability to add management metadata into some of these um, Spire entities. So in a Spire deployment, we have um, the agents and the workload entries. And more often than not, um, agents are tied to a specific platform, for example, Kubernetes, Docker, or just plain Unix. So one thing that um, a bit of a difficulty in managing Spire workloads is knowing which agents cor corresponds to which types of clusters. Um, so we added the functionality to add metadata on the agents here. So if you click the add edit workload attester, you can see that we can select a workload attester plugin that is configured to a particular agent that we have. So in this case, we can click Kubernetes and what this does is that we will see in the management of the workloads is able to suggest to us that um, because this agent um, is a Kubernetes has a Kubernetes workload or tester plugin, that it will recommend different selectors based on Kubernetes. So we can save and add this, and what we can do then do next is we can create a workload entry, right? So this is. Uh, what we, we, we would have done um, through the command line interface with the socket. So in this case, we have this nice form here. And what we can do is we can select the dropdown for parent ID. You can see that there's the Spire server, which indicates we can create an entry for a node uh, for agent. And we can also create one that connects to the Spire agent. So you can see over here that it connects both to uh, the agent IDs themselves and also entries that are created for that particular agent. So if we create the agent here, we create a spiffy ID, let's just call this new identity. And then when hit select us here, because we initially configured the agent to say that this uses a Kubernetes workload, um, I can then uh, get a list of suggested things here, right? So uh, I can say maybe namespace, and also I want a um, container name, All right? So over here you can say namespace default, and I'll say container name is my pod, something like that. So you can go ahead, you can select what kind of flags you want with it, and you can create the entry. Cool, so entry successfully created. Um, now I can go back to my entries list, and I can search for this new identity that I created over here. So that on the surface is uh, some of the basic functionality you can do with it. 
uh, more interesting ways to manage the, the metadata is um, something that we introduced called clusters um, and the tonic dashboard, uh, which allows you to really organize the agents that you have and the workload entries into high level constructs. So for this, we will be looking um, we'll be looking at another Spire Tonyak server that we've deployed. Uh, and what this server is doing is it's managing multiple clusters. So it's connected to three different Kubernetes clusters. Um, you know, because our current Minikube deployment is only one agent, we can't really showcase that kind of ability uh, just with one agent. So we're going to this next cluster over here um, called you know the SpaceX cluster. Um, so if you can see just from this agent list, you know you can see a ton of different agents being registered to this. But the first and foremost, what do I want to do first is figure out what um, what's happening here, All right? So in this case, I have node tester Kubernetes pset um, as a node tester. I also have the AWS IID. If I click on the verbose config over here, you can see that I have multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters that are running uh, that are configured to the node tester. So let's go ahead. Uh, instead of looking through the agents and entries here, uh, what I want to do is because now we have many more things that uh, we want to govern, let's take a look at the Tonic dashboard. Right? So in the Tonic dashboard, you can see um, on a high level is an overview. So we have agents per cluster here. There's no data right now because we haven't configured it for anything. And then we have entries per agent. And this really shows the different agents as well as the number of workload entries that are associated with them. Right. Um, so if you scroll down, you know, you can see the different agents, the number of entries, whether this agents are tested or not. Um, and then you have the entries together with your parent IDs. So really what this is, is a high level overview on the different entities that exist uh, within the Spire server deployment. So let's organize this a bit, right? Because we have a bunch of agents in a bunch of different clusters. Let's make some sense out of it. So if you go to clusters tab here, you can go to cluster management. And what we want to do is basically start creating constructs to manage the different agents and workload identities. Um, so let's start with the SpaceX O1 cluster. I'm going to just say Kubernetes cluster. Uh, these are optional fields. And what I'm going to say here is I want to connect all the, um, all the agents which are of SpaceX O1. So I can click SpaceX O1 assign these agents, create cluster, cluster successfully created. Uh, we can do the same thing in SpaceX O3 cluster. Uh, we will do the same thing. We would find the three agents that are linked to that, create cluster, successful. Um, we have two other clusters here, so I'm just going to really quickly create them. Um, we have TSI cube. And finally, we have our new AWS cluster. As you can see here, it's using the AWS attestations. Cool. So all created. So what happens now is if I go back to the dashboard, you can see um, the layout. Now we have agents per cluster. You can see the AWS cluster, kubetsi, spacex1, spacex3. And the cool thing here is that if you go all the way down, uh, you will be able to see um, the relationship of particular agents, uh, which cluster is it, does it belong to. And also you can do this even for uh, the entries themselves. Right? So in this case, you can see that this one belongs to SpaceX 01, SpaceX 03, QTSI. Um, so a nice thing about this dashboard that you're able to also do is you're able to filter based on information. So for example, in this case, uh, if I want to look at all my entries, I want to make sure that uh, there are no uh, um, malicious entries that have the admin flag. For example, I can do a filter here and I can say admin, admin flag contains um, true. 
So in this case, I can then take a look at this. It looks like Kubernetes registrars um, all have admin flag. That's great. Uh, and then I have these two entries here, TSI test O3 A and B. Um, or maybe I'm not sure what these entries are and therefore I would go uh, take a look at what's happening, who's created these entries and so on. So this is a quick overview of um, some of the current functionality in Tonic. Um, obviously this is, a, this is a project that's continuously being developed uh, and we look forward to a few new features that are currently being worked on. And if you are keen on contributing, do drop by and check us out. Um, the repo is under spiffy slash tonyak.